All right, so in today's video for the Civic Type R, we are gonna be installing the Jays Racing's headlights, but I was able to get these headlights for about half the price of your standard Jays Racing headlights. And also, there's a few things you're gonna to wanna to know about installing these lights so you don't accidentally break them like I did. So if you own a 10th gen Civic, you've probably seen these headlights floating around on the internet. They've a lot, they've gone by a few different names, one of them being Jay's Racing. And the Jay's Racing Co Plus headlights are about $1,400 to $1,500. And when I originally saw them, I'm like, I'm never gonna spend that much money on them. However, knowing what I know from working in the gun industry on my other channel, Tactical Toolbox, I know that a lot of times there's one manufacturer and then five or six different companies will buy that product, stamp their name on it and set their own price. And Thankfully, that's the case with these headlights. You don't gotta go buy the Jay's Racing ones for $1,400 or $1,500. In fact, you can get them for about $750. And don't worry, I'll have a link in the description where you can pick them up if that's something you're into. So these are the Morimoto XB headlights that we're gonna be installing today. And before we go out in the garage and install them, I wanted to kind of give you a forewarning on these. They don't come with any instructions. And so that's why I'm making today's tutorial. But one thing I wanted to tell you before we get started is on the back of the headlights, there's two adjustment screws, one for raising and lowering the height of it and one for side to side. On the back of the headlight, I didn't read it, unfortunately. It says, do not turn these screws more than three rotations in either direction. And so I'm gonna show you how not to do that because well, I broke my headlights and thankfully I was able to fix them. I'm gonna tell you how I fixed them when we're done here installing them. All right, so to get these headlights on, we basically got to take all of this off. We got to take this front bumper off. You're going to need one of these little tools. I'll throw some links down below where you can go pick some of these up. This is a plastic one. Um, you can get metal ones as well. This came with a panel popper kit that I bought. So I'll make sure to link that below. But basically we got to go from here all the way down, all the way to this side. And then we're gonna have a couple up in here that we gotta remove. Then there is a couple of little things down in the side marker we gotta undo. A couple of little things in here, which we'll get to in a minute. And then underneath the car, unfortunately I don't have a lift and I don't feel like putting them on jack stands. So you may not be able to see what I'm gonna do underneath, but there's a bunch more of these and a couple of 10 millimeter bolts. So let's get started. I'm gonna start all the way over here on the left and then I'm gonna work my way over to that side. So for the ones that are on the corners of each headlight, they're different than all the rest of these. I accidentally broke one. Um, it should still work even without the head because I was able to remove it. I just accidentally popped the top of it off, but I'm gonna super glue that. I'll let you know towards the end if that actually worked or not. So now that we have all of the pins out of the top of this, the only other thing we gotta do is we gotta remove these little guys from the intake tubing and they're just pinned into place as well. I just totally forgot about these. All right, so now once that's done, the center piece comes out as one unit. Set that to the side. And then there is a piece that goes all the way across from headlight to headlight. That's our weather stripping. Set that to the side. All right, so now that we got the top clips off, we're gonna go ahead and take out these, I believe three screws. I think it's only this one and this one. But there is a one right up here that I we may or may not have to remove. I think that just holds the fender liner in. Now there's a little bit of piece that's behind the uh, side marker. You just push in with it. I'm just gonna push. You don't have to do it like this, but I think it's easier. Uh, you push that and the side marker will come off just like so. And then right here, you'll be able to see a little bitty plastic clip that is actually holding the bumper on. Right up here, you're just gonna push straight down in this little hole. You can't see it from this angle. And then you're gonna pull out. And then there's one right up here towards the front that you're gonna push. And you're just gonna keep kind of gently tugging and you'll feel it click out of place. Then you're just gonna repeat this same exact process on the other side. All right, so now we're just gonna take our flathead screwdriver and we're gonna look at, there's a hole here and then there's a hole here. And inside are these little clips and you're just gonna depress them and pull out. And then that one already depressed for me. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. 
Okay, so now we need to get underneath the car, underneath the front bumper over here. All right, so now we gotta get underneath the car in order to get the rest of the bumper off. On the bottom of the bumper is essentially the same types of push pins that we took off of the top. On each side is a 10 millimeter bolt and an Allen head. But essentially we just gotta get underneath here. We gotta pop those clips, remove those bolts, and then we'll continue with removing the front bumper. So that took a while. I got all the push pins uh, removed from the bottom bumper. I may have removed more than I needed to. Like I mentioned earlier, on the bottom of each side is a 10 millimeter and an Allen head. The Allen head, I used a four millimeter wrench to remove that. On the Type R, there is a piece under there that looks like this, and it has three 10 millimeter bolts that hold that in. I removed those, but I don't think we needed to. So you remember earlier, we had to get these uh, side parts under wheel well popped out but apparently there's a couple more in the headlight here, and I'm gonna use this light right here so I can see them. So for the ones that are in the headlight here, use a little light, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna use like a little, a little guy like this, and you're gonna reach up underneath them, and you're gonna pop them up like so. All right, so earlier I kind of forgot a step. I said we had to remove these screws that were right here, but apparently we gotta remove these screws as well, and I just happened to miss that part. But from what I can see, we're just gonna be removing this bottom one. We're not gonna be removing this top one right here. So now we can pull from this side, and we're just gonna be releasing things using this plastic clip. Don't use anything metal because you could mar your bumper up. So there's that side. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And there it goes, just fell right off. Before we go any further, one thing I didn't do from underneath was disconnect the fog lights, but I can actually see down in here, and they're just little plugs, you just pull those out. So whenever the bumper releases, it's just gonna fall off, um, basically just like that. So we're just gonna pull it out to the side and set it over here for the time being. All right, so now we got, I think it's four or five 10 millimeter bolts we gotta remove. Um, we got one here, one here, I can see that we have one right here, and then right here towards the front, going back in there is another one. You're gonna need an extension to get to it. Um, I thought there was five, but maybe I'm wrong, but let's just find out. Ah, found it. There's one right here as well. That's where the other one was. I knew there was another one, I just couldn't find it. Now I'm just gonna unclip my headlight from the back. All right, so there's a few things that we gotta take off of this headlight unit and transfer them to the new headlight unit. Uh, number one are these two clips at the top. They're both removed with a Phillips head. And then we just gotta remove this bracket assembly. And this bracket assembly is held in place with what looks like two uh, 10 millimeter bolts. So let's get to doing that and then I'll show you how to install them onto the new headlight. And then that comes off just like so. And then I'm also gonna make a note on which one is the in innermost clip and the outermost clip. And I'm just gonna remove those with a Phillips head. Okay, now we can get our new headlight. All right, so when you pull out this uh, Morimoto headlight, you're gonna notice a couple of things. Um, number one, if, you're, if your car has halogens, you're gonna need to use this adapter right here for your halogens. However, on the Civic Type R, we're not, we don't have halogens, we have LED. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove that adapter because that's just to convert halogen to LED. Number two, right here, you're gonna notice this little plug. It will come undone like that, or you can keep it closed. Um, we're gonna have to test it, but one of these, open or closed, um, makes it have a sequential turn signal, and one of them makes it have just a normal one. We're gonna have to test that. I believe open is sequential and closed is normal, but it could be the other way around. We also have our ballast right here. I'm not really sure where we're gonna mount that yet. So one of these is gonna connect to our headlight, one of them's gonna connect to our turn signal. I believe this one is our turn signal. All right, so I went ahead and took the plastic off the headlight. We're just gonna put our clips back into place that we took off the other headlight and make sure they're in the same orientation so the innermost clip goes onto the innermost clip because both clips are different. Now we're gonna take our mounting bracket here. I believe that goes just like this. We're gonna put our two 10 millimeter bolts back in. 
All right, now we can go up to the car. We can get ready to install this. All right, so here we are on the back side of this headlight unit. So like I mentioned right here, we have our ballast. Um, we're gonna put that somewhere for the moment. And then right here is our headlight plug. I believe that's just gonna go into place like that. And then our turn signal plug is gonna go into place just like that. Now I wanna test this before we actually mount everything up. So let's see what happens here. All right, so here we go right here. Everything is working great. So the outer three over here, low beams, inner two right here are our high beams. And then you can see that our blinker here is sequential at the moment. And if you remember me showing you these guys right here, um, if they're unplugged, this will be sequential. If it's plugged in, it'll be just a normal blinker. Let me know down in the comments which one you like better. Then when the blinker is not in use, turn signal just turns into our LED strip. So that'll be our daytime running lights. So if we just turn on the parking lights right now, all, all that's gonna light up is the LED strip. And I think that looks dead sexy. Now, another thing to keep in mind here is if you wanna run the sequential turn signal, you have to keep this unclipped. I would throw just a little bit of uh, electrical tape or something around each side of these to keep any water from getting into them. All right, so something I kind of forgot to talk about, I had to take the headlight back out to show you guys this. There's a little ballast that's right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some double-sided tape and I'm gonna stick the ballast right here on the back of this headlight unit. So far, that's where it is right now. Now we'll just reinstall this headlight, do the same thing to the other headlight. Back up top. All right, cool. So it's actually been about a month now since I've done the install on these headlights. And I kind of want to give you guys an update on how they're working out and you know how the fix is holding up and everything and how I actually fixed them. So inside of their headlights, there's two bolts. On the inside, they're Phillips head. On the outside, they have a socket. I suggest using a socket because I accidentally stripped one out using a screwdriver. And then also you just can turn it a lot faster using a socket wrench. So what had happened was I didn't read that warning label that said don't turn them more than three rotations in either direction. And I was raising my headlights, raising them, and then I heard a pop. And then I watched the light output on the wall go bloop, just like that. My heart sank because number one, I'm not gonna be able to get a refund for something that I broke. Number two, I don't know if I can buy just one replacement headlight. I might have to go buy another set if I wanna use it. So I got my brain to working and I figured out how to fix them. So what I did was on the back of the headlight, you can actually remove the adjuster out of it. And there's this long screw that comes out and on the end of the screw was this little plastic piece that was had obviously been broken. So I took a flashlight and I looked down in the hole of the headlight and I saw, there was a little hole inside and I noticed that this little piece that broken off fit into that hole. And so what I did was I went out and I picked up some of this Loctite epoxy. I'll put a link below. I actually bought this on Amazon. But essentially what I did was I was very careful not to put too much, but on the adjuster, I twisted it until the adjuster reached the very end of that screw. I put a tad of epoxy on each side and I carefully placed it back into the headlight where it would go inside of that new hole and then the epoxy would cure like this. And then I tightened the adjuster back on the headlight and I let it sit overnight. The next day I just prayed that it would hold. I started trying to adjust the headlights again and lo and behold, it worked, thankfully. So I've been driving around for about a month now with the Morimoto XB headlights and my experiences have been really good. And I've been seeing a lot of questions on the forums and stuff about these. And I kind of want to address a lot of those questions. So number one question that I've seen is how's the light output? to stock. Unfortunately, I don't have a light meter, but I can tell you judging from my eyeball, it seems to be a little bit less, but not enough for me to be like, I'm not, I don't want to run these headlights. 
When I've been driving around at night on the low beams, I never feel like, wow, I can't see anything, or wow, I wish I had more light output. I never feel that way. However, the light output characteristics are different, meaning you have a much sharper cutoff with these than you do with the OEMs. With the OEM LED headlights that come on some of the Civics and on the Civic Type R, you get more of a flood effect with your headlights, whereas these have a razor sharp cutoff. And in between the headlights, you get this beautiful X pattern that goes up the wall. I think that looks really good. In a previous video, I installed those Laminex yellow fogs, and I think that they look dead sexy with those fogs, with the light output. I love it to death. The second question that I've seen on the forums is, does moisture get into these headlights? And honestly, I haven't seen any moisture getting into them. I've driven them in the rain once. It wasn't on purpose. I went somewhere and it started raining and I drove home. And so I thought, wow, this would be a good chance to see if they get any moisture in them. And thankfully, when I got home, no moisture got inside of them. And I'm super excited about that part. Um, the other question kind of came from, how do you actually level and adjust your headlights? And I'm gonna kind of give you the rule of thumb that I was taught. I went to the back of a Walmart because my driveway isn't level. You get a level surface and you're gonna pull up about one foot away from a wall. On the front of your headlight, you're gonna notice this little circle that's etched into the plastic. You're gonna take a level or a ruler or something. And you're gonna measure from that etching mark to the wall. And then wherever that ruler touches on the wall, you're gonna put a piece of tape. You're gonna do that for both headlights. And then you're, I took a level to make sure that both of those pieces of tape were level. Then what you're gonna do, is you're gonna back that car up away from the wall, 25 feet exactly. So you want the nose of your car to sit on the 25 foot mark. So what I did was I took a really long tape measure, measured out 25 feet. Essentially what you want is the hot spot of those headlights to land on those pieces of tape. Some people take their cutoff right up to the pieces of tape. I took my cutoff just above the pieces of tape. And no one's really flickered their lights at me, to, you know, thinking that I'm running high beams because I'm not blinding anyone. But essentially you just adjust them until the cutoffs kind of meet at the tape marks. And then you can take it just a hair above the tape marks or you can keep your cutoff on the tape marks. It's kind of up to you. I took mine just a little bit higher because I knew I was going to lower my car about an inch later. So that way it probably sits perfectly now. Thankfully driving around for the past month, I probably put an additional 500 miles on the car, just going to and from different places like Vivid Racing where we're putting on exhaust and tunes and stuff like that. And thankfully the fix that I did for it with the epoxy still holding up very well. I'm still able to adjust my headlights, which is amazing. Now that I'm a month out driving in another four or 500 miles, would I do this again knowing what I know now? Well, if they were 14 or $1,500, I would say no, I wouldn't buy them for that amount of money. But considering the fact that I paid $750 for these, I would absolutely do this again. I got them during a Black Friday sale, but they range between 750 and 850, just kind of depending on where you get them. I'll make sure to put a link below to a couple of places. That way, if there's something you wanna check out, it'll be there at your leisure. But because I didn't pay that much for them, I 100% don't regret it because number one, they only broke because I didn't follow the directions that were printed on the back of the headlight. So that's my fault, not the company's fault. Um, however, I do wish that they would have stronger adjustments on them. That way they wouldn't break. Maybe put some metal arms in there, maybe beef them up a little bit, especially at that price point. I think that makes the car look phenomenally much better. I like that mean look. I like the fact that I can choose between having a sweeping LED blinker or just a blinking LED blinker. But more importantly, what are your thoughts? Do you think these headlights are a notable upgrade? Do you think they're worth the price? Do you think they make the car look better or look worse? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. But anyways, guys, until next time, I love you and you guys stay sexy.